So I'm here today in the Brecon Beacons National Park and it's a new moon and it's a clear night. Well, it's not night yet, but you know what I mean. And I'm here to get some astrophotography. I have brought my Micro Four Thirds gear and my full frame gear. I'm gonna shoot both. And I thought it would be an interesting exercise to show the pros and cons of both and to see what Micro Four Thirds can achieve compared to the full frame traditional setup. So here are my setups. My Micro Four Thirds cameras are the Lumix G100 and the GH5. My full frame are Lumix S5 and S1. My full frame lenses of choice are the Samyang 14mm f2.8 which is a Canon adapted lens and my Micro Four Thirds lenses for Astro tend to be the 7 Artisan 7.5 2.8 fisheye and just the Lumix 12 to 35 stock lens. I also have the Move Shoot Move Star Tracker. Also, the place we were staying in was very horse themed, which was ironic because a horse nearly bowled over me when I was filming by the lake. It was a very strange place, but very beautiful. Hi. <laughs> Anyway, so the sun is going down now and we're in position ready for our evening of astrophotography. I think it's very important once you get into your location to start scouting your potential compositions long before you lose light because there's nothing worse than scrambling around in the dark trying to find a composition. So the way that I go about this is once I'm here, I use the augmented reality function on photo pills. Now you can actually see on the hour exactly where everything is scheduled to be and I've picked a few locations. We have the actual hut shire stall that we're staying in, I'm not quite sure what it is but it's very picturesque. We have the chalets down here and this is due to line up at about 11 p.m. So as you can see there's sometimes a little bit of patience involved with astrophotography and between those times we can have time lapses as the Milky Way moves from over here along to over here maybe these things that will catch my eye later on that i haven't seen yet when the milky way and the stars come out so it's now knocking on nine o'clock i've got my first composition in position so far the conditions are blooming perfect and we'll see how both systems get on I'm pretty sure the full frame ones will look better, but I don't think the micro four thirds ones will be bad, particularly with conditions like this. You couldn't really ask for much better. Out of all the setups, I had the least hope for my little G100, as you can probably understand. The lens is very affordable, shall we say, and the camera even resorts to electronic shutter mode when shooting at 30 seconds or higher. It was even on my little travel tripod, which on paper shouldn't be great for astrophotography, let alone a two hour time lapse. Imagine my surprise when my little G100 did this. Now I didn't really expect anything to happen with this time lapse, I literally just left it going while I was working on the other cameras and I think it's one of my favourites of the whole night. This first image is 10 images stacked, the settings are on screen and I think the detail is absolutely incredible. Here is a single image exposure just to show you that you can get it very very well if you don't want to stack and I'm very impressed with how all of those images turned out. It's nearly 11 o'clock and I wanted to make sure that my star tracker was properly aligned because sometimes it's a little bit finicky and it took two or three test shots to get it right and I've been testing it now up to five minutes of exposure and the stars are still pretty sharp so I polar aligned it with Polaris using my app and my laser and then once that bit's done as long as you don't move the tripod the ball head you can move any which way you like, it's magic as far as I'm concerned. So the one thing to remember when you are doing your tracked image is your foreground will be very blurry. So once you've done your stars, and your stars are amazing, you've got to make sure you do a foreground image. Then we can stack them in post and everyone is happy. <laughs> So this is using the move, shoot, move tracker for five minutes of exposure. The GH5, I actually managed to stop down the lens to 3.5 and you can see there's loads and loads of details. This is just one image. Here is the original and I shot ETTR exposing to the right so that there's a lot of information in the file so that when you add your contrast, you get to see the stars emerge. I also needed to shoot a foreground shot so the stars are blurry in this one but the tree is crisp and then I stuck them both together in editing. 
Now the final setup is the Lumix S5 with the Samyang 14mm f2.8. Now this is a brilliant astrophotography lens, I've used it before to great success. However, because the focal length is so wide, it's sometimes quite tricky to find some compositions. You have to be right on top of your foreground in order for it to look good in frame. And I did struggle a little bit with this sort of setup where I was filming, just because certain things were in fields out of my reach. In terms of focal length, this was the trickiest. However, I think the results are beautiful. I decided to just stack the images with my S5 and not use the move shoot move because once you've set it up in the dark it's really really hard to sort of make sure it stays the same if you're changing your setup all the time. So these are stacked images using the S5 and as you can see the full frame did so well. The images have got tons of detail, not a lot of noise and they've came out brilliantly. I just think for this scenario the focal length was slightly too wide. I would have loved to have had a 24mm in retrospect rather than the 14 and then I, I would have sacrificed some exposure time but I think the compositions would have been stronger. So here are my favourite images from each of the setups. Which one did you like best? Let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to learn more about astrophotography and see more of this particular shoot, I've actually made a mini course all about astrophotography for beginners and includes 15 lessons that go through plan Planning, preparation, shooting and editing shots just like this. It's a complete beginner's course. If you want to learn more about astrophotography, this is a great mini course for you. It's not for intermediates who are already on the path. There's not much information about star trackers or anything too technical. It's about just getting out with the gear you already own and getting some interesting results. So check that out in the description below if you'd like to learn more. If you'd like to learn more about the 7 Artisans fisheye lens, watch this review next. It's my full in-depth review.